There are no easy mountains, and the 7000 is no different. In 2011, my Austrian expedition leader Herbert Wolf said these things to me on the 7246 meter high Pudha Hiunkuli, Daulagiri 7, in Nepal. I still remember them very well. I had to turn around because the weather was getting worse, and I was 150 meters below the summit, which was too late. Herbert was talking about how bad weather can make a mountain that looks easy into one that is hard and dangerous. Peak Lenin in Kyrgyzstan is what commercial adventure companies call an Entry 7000, or an Easy 7000. On August 7, a Russian mountain guide died on the 7134-meter high mountain in the Pamirs. His death was caused by both bad luck and someone else's carelessness. Three more trip participants who had helped the Kyrgyz agency plan the trip were lucky enough to survive the accident. I know from experience. Without a helmet and an ice axe. Peak Lenin has been tried by a lot of climbers this season. The weather has been very bad lately, according to reports from many expeditions. In July, the success rate on the summit dropped from about 20% to 2% because of heavy snow, wind, and cold. A member of the rope team of four said, on the morning of August 7, we were the first group to take the traditional route from Camp 1 at 4,400 meters across the snow-covered and crevassed glacier to Camp 2 at 5,300 meters. He wants to stay anonymous because he is still alive and healthy. He said that the Russian mountain guide was an experienced climber who had reached the top of 8,000 meter peaks. But it looks like he didn't take the climb up the glacier very seriously. He didn't have a helmet or an ice axe. He was given a 40 meter rope, but he wouldn't pay out more than 20 meters. In the end, it killed him. Inside the ice sheet. At first, they were able to jump across some deep, narrow cracks. At the height of about 5,000 meters, the team finally reached a large chasm into which the wind had blown a lot of snow. Two climbers were crossing the snow bridge at the same time when it broke because the rope gap between us was too small. It was over so fast. Because the rope connection was not strong enough, the others and I were also pulled into the 20 meter deep crevasse. When the Russian mountaineer fell and hit his head on the ground, he died right away. When the guide's crampons hit another team member, the person was badly cut. The other two climbers landed on the side of the crevasse without getting hurt, but one of them hurt his knee. Other rope teams saw that the three people suddenly disappeared into the crevasse. All of the people were taken out of the chasm by helicopter about two hours later. Extreme carelessness. The member of the expedition also said that the Russian mountain guide didn't have the right gear for the weather at peak Lenin. If we had used the full length of the rope, which we told the mountain guide not to do, only one person would have stood on the snow bridge, and if it broke, we would have had a chance to stop the fall, said an expedition member. The food that had been left at the high camps was the same. That was egregious carelessness, the climber said. You should really think carefully about who will be in charge of you on such an adventure. Stone with the names of those who died in the ice avalanche of 1990. In 1928, a Soviet-German team was the first to reach the top of Peak Lenin. At the peak, bad things often happen. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In 1974, eight Russian women climbers died from frostbite caused by a blizzard. The climbing accident that killed the most people happened on Peak Lenin. An earthquake caused an avalanche of snow and ice that buried a high camp. Only two climbers made it out alive, so 43 of them died. What a waste of $7,000.